One of the most challenging aspects of designing and implementing a monitoring program is figuring out where you're going to locate your monitoring sites. In a really diverse landscape, where are you going to go and collect the data for your monitoring program? And a really powerful and commonly used technique for that is stratified random sampling. Now in stratified sampling, we will take a landscape and divide it up into relatively homogeneous types of land and then we'll allocate samples within those types. And uh, it's a very commonly used technique. However, there are some costs associated with doing that technique. It adds complexity. And if you stratify a landscape uh, based on something that's not related to the heterogeneity of the land, then there can actually be a loss of statistical power in using that technique. So in this m and exercise, we're going to explore stratified random sampling and why it ends up being a powerful statistical technique and look at a situation where it doesn't actually really work. So m and theory, stratified random sampling. For this exercise, you're gonna need a couple of things. First is one of these fancy picnic plates that has the three compartments in it that keep your baked beans separate from your potato salad. And the second thing we're gonna need are some M&Ms. Uh, a share size pack of M&Ms from the convenience store seems to be a good number of M&Ms for this kind of thing. Or uh, I just got some uh, M&Ms from the bulk bin at the grocery store. And we're gonna just pour these M&Ms onto our plate. And the goal here is to get a roughly even density of M&Ms. Okay. And in theory, the proportion of the M&Ms in each of the compartments should be about even, okay? And so this will be our equal proportions example. And I'm gonna sort of label these containers or these dividers. So this is big, small one, and small two. And what we're gonna do is tally up the number of blue M&Ms, because everybody knows that the blue ones are the best, blue M&Ms in each container or each section and the total number of M&Ms in each section. And then we'll be able to, to calculate the proportion for each section. So let's start here. It looks like there's five blue M&Ms and uh, what, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 35 M&Ms total in that, in that compartment. Okay, so I'm gonna write that down I'll do the same for these other two compartments offline and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've written all that down for my compartments and uh, this is our equal proportions example, okay? So this would be an example where we've stratified but maybe there's not a lot of reason that we should have stratified in the first place. All right, so now what we're gonna do is manipulate this setup and we're going to take about half of the blue M&Ms here from our large compartment. And we're gonna add them to small two. All right, we've done sort of two things here. We increase the density of small two, and we also really increase the proportion of blue M&Ms in that compartment, all right? So now my strata, if I count each one of these containers as a strata, my strata are different from each other. And, and that's the reason that you stratify. If you have portions of your population that have different properties from each other, okay? So now we're gonna go back and count up our blue M&Ms and our total M&Ms in each one of these containers and, uh, and write those down into a separate data set that we were gonna call our unequal proportions data set. All right, so I will go ahead and do that and then we're gonna move this over to, uh, to look at the data and then we'll calculate the estimates and see what the effect of stratification is if I have equal proportions or unequal proportions. Okay, so here's the data that we collected on the blue M&Ms for our stratified random sampling example. And the equal proportion uh, M&Ms are on the left side and the unequal proportions blue M&Ms are on the, the right hand side here. And I've entered these data in what we would call a tidy data format. So instead of having separate columns for my big small one and small two strata, and then recording the number of M blue M&Ms and total M&Ms in each one of those, I've just created a column for stratum 
and, uh, and then just the number of blue M&Ms, the total number of M&Ms. And the reason that I'm doing that is we're going to take these data into R, the statistics package, and calculate our estimates and our variances and confidence intervals around those estimates in R. Uh, and the main reason for doing that is that once you get into like stratified random sampling estimates or computing estimates for more complex designs, it's really kind of a pain to try to do that in Excel when there are a lot of great packages and functions in R that will do that for you. So I'm going to switch over here to R and then we will continue. Okay, so we're in R now and I've written a script to help us with uh, analyzing the proportions of the M&Ms from our example and I'm just going to sort of step through this and run these commands as we go and I'll try to explain what we're doing while, we, uh, while I do it. So this first set here, we're going to uh, use two packages in R. The first is the survey package, which is what we're actually going to use to, to calculate the estimates from our data. And then the second package is called ggplot, and that's for just making some really nice graphics uh, of our results. And so the next thing I'm going to do is um, just set up some, some basic variables that I'm going to use. One is telling R, like what the, where the directory is that my files are stored. And then the next two lines, lines 9 and 10 here, uh, are just the names of the data files that I stored the, the data in. Okay, uh, next part here, then we're actually going to load the data up and we're going to use a, uh, a command called read.csv in R. That's just going to bring these two files in, uh, one for the equal proportion data set and one for the unequal proportion data set. And, uh, and we can look at these uh, data sets and we can see that they look just like they did in Excel. Okay. Not a bad idea to look at your data, make sure it, it actually uh, uh, is what you what you think it is uh, before you start going. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is calculate our proportions because we just have the number of M, blue M and M's and the total number of M and M's for each of our strata, and uh, and this command here is uh, is going to do that. And uh, uh, I'll try to break this down a little bit. So here's our our data set, my equal proportions data set. The dollar sign just tells R that I'm going to give it a, uh, a field name here um, or a column name. And so I'm going to create a new column called prop for proportions. And I'm, I'm going to sort of set that equal to the number of blue M&Ms divided by the total number of M&Ms. And uh, I'll run both these lines. And now if we look at that data set again, you can see now I have a new column here that is the calculated proportions for, uh, for my blue M&Ms. Okay, so at this point we are ready to start doing some analysis. And the first thing I actually want to do is run this as uh, the equal proportion data set as just a simple random sample. So we're just going to ignore any of the stratum designations and, uh, and just see what we would get by, uh, by, by running it straight up. <clears throat> and uh, the first thing we need to do, we're going to use the survey package for this, and we need to tell the survey package what our sampling design is. And there's a uh, function in R called uh, survey design. It's SVY design. And uh, I'm going to uh, just tell it that I don't have any strata. And, uh, and here's our data set, so the equal proportions. And so this is going to set it up as a simple random sample. Okay, and uh, I got a warning message down here at the bottom, uh, which is which is fine for this case. Uh, it's just saying, hey, you didn't give me any survey weights. Well, we didn't have any weights to give it in this point, so uh, so it's everything's good. Um, so the next thing I can do is use this command survey mean svy mean, and uh, tell it that I want to look at the proportions column, and then have it actually just calculate the mean proportion from my simple random sample. And so my mean was uh, 0.238 roughly, and the standard error was 0.0157. So if I switch these two percentages, that would be a, a mean of about 23.8 and a standard error of about 1.6%. Okay, so we will uh, keep that, those numbers in mind and, uh, and refer back to those. All right, so that was our simple random sample. 
Now let's actually set up a uh, stratified uh, sampling design using my equal proportions data set. So uh, same thing, I'm going to use my uh, survey design function here. But I'm, in this case, I'm going to tell it that this column, the stratum column, actually sets up the strata that I'm going to use. So we will run that. And, uh, and then I'm going to run my, uh, my survey mean command from that as well. And uh, check this out. So I got the same mean, which is about 23.8 percent. If we if we did it as percents, not proportions. But look at this. My standard error is 1.62 percent, which is actually slightly higher than I got by running it as just a straight up simple random sample. So the question is why? Like what happened there? Well, it's because we. Uh, imposed a stratification, we imposed an extra complexity in this sample design when there was no reason to. There, there's no difference between the strata and so there's actually a statistical cost for doing that and that cost shows up as an inefficiency in our analysis or a loss of, of precision, a bigger standard error. And so our confidence intervals, we can run a confidence interval for our um, for our simple random sample, and I can run a confidence interval for my stratified random sample for uh, the equal proportions. And you can see that my confidence interval is just slightly wider for my stratified design than it is for my simple random sample design. So not the end of the world here. This is a pretty modest difference between these, but you can get in situations where those differences are actually quite pronounced. Uh, if there's no reason to stratify or if you are stratifying by something that is not related to the indicator that you're trying to measure. So if you were looking at say biomass or cover, stratifying by land potential, like stratifying by ecological sites, could be a really good way to do that because cover or biomass is related to ecological sites. Uh, stratifying by something like BLM pastures or allotments, probably not a really great idea because you wouldn't necessarily expect ahead of time that you would have differences in biomass or cover that would be just related to those pastures alone. All right. So last thing we want to do, not quite last thing, almost last thing we want to do is to run this with our uh, stratified uh, design where we we change the proportions so that there were differences between the strata. So I'm going to set up the design here for my unequal proportions set and uh, run that. Now a couple things to notice here. So my my estimated mean is slightly lower here than it was before, and the reason for that is we were just kind of willy-nilly moving uh, M&Ms between the, the, the two strata, okay? So that's not entirely unexpected. The thing, though, that, that really we want to pay attention to, though, is that our standard error is quite a bit lower here. So instead of 1.57% uh, or 1.62% for our standard error, we're now down to about 1.18% uh, for our standard error. And uh, our corresponding confidence intervals would also be narrower too. And so uh, last thing we can do here is um, I've got some code here that just sort of sets this up to graph it. I'm going to go ahead and run that. Um, the graph's going to sort of pop up on the side here, and then I'll, uh, I'll bring it into the video so we can see it. OK, so uh, we can see here then on the graph that our, uh, our proportion estimates, the mean proportions, are roughly the same. But um, our, our sort of confidence intervals are the narrowest for the, the stratified design where there was actually a difference in our indicator between the strata. So we, we changed it so that the, each strata had a different proportion of, of M&Ms, blue M&Ms in it. And that actually made a big difference in the confidence estimate that we got for that stratum. And the reason for that is that the technique is able to split apart the variability as to what's happening within each strata versus what's happening between the strata. And by splitting that out, 
it's able to give you a much more precise estimate for that mean. And so that's, that's the power of a stratified random sampling design, but you can only realize that power if your strata are related to the indicator that you are measuring. Thank you.